Hey Little Family, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Cami Ewald. Today I'm going to show you guys how I did this buffalo check tumbler with a waterfall glitter coming down from the top. Super cute design that I showed you guys how to make last week in the design tutorial. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will put a link in the description. Check it out. So a couple things I've learned about these buffalo check tumblers. One, get yourself a flat angled brush and this along with everything else that I'm using in this video will be linked in the description but seriously guys you will thank me <laughs> and I'll show you why when we get into the video secondly block out some time this cup takes a while you have to be patient block out some hours or maybe days I don't really know it takes a while so <laughs> give yourself time Three, like I mentioned in the last one, patience is a virtue. Not one I possess very well, but patience is a virtue. <laughs> Four, you definitely want to make sure that you're mindful of the color that you're mixing up for that mid color, especially if you're using white glitter, and I'll show you in the video what I'm talking about. Four, holding your tongue out helps you get a straight line. Not really. but. Anchoring your pinky down does, and I'll show you that in the video. So if you're here for that kind of a tutorial on a buffalo check, fun, just super glittery, girly cup, let's get into it. Alrighty, so we're going to start with a sanded, washed and dried, and then base coated white cup. This is a 32 ounce slim from Stainless Steel Depot. And I'm just going to take this piece of paper and use the pencil to go around the outside edge of this cup to create a circle. We're going to cut it out. This is going to be our template. And I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to fold it in half and then continue folding until we have eights. Um, and then after I get this folded, I'm going to unfold it again, lay it flat, and then I'm going to mark with my pencil everywhere that there's a folded line. It's going to help me with the next step, which is going to be I'm going to take the cup and put it back on this circle, and I'm going to transfer those same lines up the edge of the cup. It's going to provide us with kind of a evenly spaced template all the way around for where to put our tape. So then after we're done with that, I'm just going to start with the tape. I start at the top where I made those marks and then I kind of set my cup up and try to get it as straight up and down as you can. This is a tapered cup, so it's not as easy as like a straight sided or um, even a slightly taper, but I'm going to continue around. This is just a guide. You'll see here in a minute that I actually, after I get it all done, I look and make sure it's evenly spaced and if any or not I'll just kind of take it up and readjust it from there and then you want to make sure that you go around the bottom and get a very tight seal on that tape to where no paint or glitter or anything um, bleeds underneath of it and same at the top here I'm doing the same thing and making sure we get a real good tight seal on this tape going up and down and I know some of this video is going to be fast there's so much to it that I just wanted to make sure to get it all in and not have an uberly long video for you guys so then I'm going to take and go around starting at the top rim of this cup and with a taper or a curve, you're going to actually pull to what will be the left side on the screen here. So that the very top of it, that's where I'm angling my tape pull at. I want that to be the tightest seal. And I'll show you guys here in a second how to seal the rest of it. But I just go along and I kind of create myself a tab here to make pulling the tape easier later. And then after I make sure that that top is super secure, I'm going to take my thumb and I'm actually going to go in between the vertical tape lines first and I'm smoothing out the wrinkles to that outside edge of each one of those parts. So I'm smoothing the wrinkles actually onto the vertical tape areas because those places are coming up anyway. So I want that middle section to be 100% percent tight 
and sealed and the rest of it can be wrinkled. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. I then start on the second round and this one isn't as important that it gets a proper seal because we're just using this as a marker line but I want to make sure that it's not overlapping that tape line before it and so then I just go into that third round. This one's going to have a tight seal because it's what we're going to leave. So I go around and same thing, I will make sure it's sealed. And then the second round of tape, we pull off and I use that same piece of tape to go around the fourth. And then I'm just going to carry on in this fashion down the cup and make sure that I seal every other one really, really well in between the vertical tape lines. Then I'm going to take this Mod Podge and mix a couple of spoonfuls with acrylic paint. And you're going to want to make sure that you mix more than you think that you're going to need because it's really hard to match colors exactly unless you're like meticulously measuring out or whatnot, which I do not do. <laughs> so then I just make sure it's mixed completely. And this is going to be the medium in which we use to both base coat the color that we need for the glitter that we're going to be using and the glue to hold the glitter in place. I just mix it really well and then I'm going to start with these open squares and it's not as difficult on this round. You just kind of make sure that you get up against all sides of that tape so that you can make sure you're getting the corners really well. I have found for the most part I always wind up doing two coats so I don't worry about like getting a super solid coat here just to make sure it's completely covered. I tap off the glitter in between each one so I don't get a crazy mess going on and then I just continue on in this fashion all the way around the cup in this color. And when I get all the way around to the first row, it's dry enough to start again. So I just push paint with my paintbrush down in between the other glitter. And then I use my scissors to kind of tap in this new row of glitter to make sure it gets a full coverage. And then I just take this empty medicine cup, cover the first one, and set it off to the side to keep it from drying out. I'm going to take this horizontal tape off and allow this to dry for about two hours. You want it good and dry so you can aggressively brush off the glitter before you start your next coat. And I always start with my darkest color first so that I'm not contaminating lighter colors as I go along. So after two hours, I brush it off really, really well. And then here's where I kind of ran into a pickle doing this cup. The first time I mixed up the mid color, and I didn't mix it light enough so I actually wound up redoing this entire cup because it dried much darker than what I had mixed it and my mid color has a mix of this darker purple and white. The white glitter actually absorbed that darker mid color that I had mixed before and so when it completely set up you couldn't really tell the two colors apart. It just looked like white and purple. So I redid the cup because I wanted to produce something that was pretty. <laughs> so in this picture I'm showing you guys, this is the same glitter mix, just a lighter lavender and a darker lavender paint. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a heads up to watch out for. So here is kind of a closer up. And when I'm getting up close to that purple glitter, the darker purple glitter, I'm kind of sneaking up on it. I'm not just smushing my paint in there. And instead of like trying to draw a straight line of paint across, I'm just letting my paintbrush barely set down. And this is where that flat angled paintbrush comes in really, really handy. You're able to get that straight line across without trying to paint it with a not straight brush, if that makes sense. And so same thing here, you're just going to tap it in, go around and make sure that you get all four corners of, or all four sides of 
each section until you get all the way around your cup again. And like I said, this takes plenty of time. The next couple of rounds will take even longer, so just be patient with yourself. Then in this next round of that mid color, I'm doing the same thing as I did the first time. I am just making sure that I push some paint kind of down into that glitter so I get a really good solid coverage. And notice where my pinky is. It's anchored on the cup that's stabilizing my hand so that I can get those really solid straight lines up against that darker purple and I'm not super worried about the edges where the tape is quite yet so I'm just more concerned about where that dark purple meets this mid color I want a really good crisp line And after the second coat of paint and glitter, I go ahead and pull these vertical paint stripes and set off to the side, allow it to dry for two hours, and then come back in and brush everything off really well. And then the fun rounds. <laughs> so like before, I'm going to just set my paintbrush down and allow it to make the straight lines. I'm not drawing a line across here. And I know this top section is blank. I'll show you guys why here in a minute, but I always like tap off my paint in the center of the square before I move into the rest of it. So I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush that is going to possibly leak over into the glitter or make my line smudge further up than I want it to. And I have enough paint right there at handy so I don't have to reach over for another little bit of paint on my brush. It's all just right there. And same thing, I'm just taking my time. This is real time. So I'm going around and as you go forward, you're gonna kind of gauge the squares in between almost more than you are the section you're painting on. That way, you know, you have straight lines. You're looking at both the square you're working on and the blank square above the spot that you're working on to see if it looks square enough or that you have enough or straight enough lines. I hope I'm making sense, you guys. Just take time, put your paint down, making sure you concentrate on those colors and those lines as well as you can. And then we're just gonna sprinkle glitter, tap it off with some scissors and continue on. second verse same as the first <laughs> but same thing you're just going to use your brush make your lines straight and as you get lighter and lighter it'll allow you to kind of overcorrect any lines that may not have been straight on the first pass um especially when you get to the white because white kind of black blanks out anything else so it kind of acts as an eraser if you're careful with it. And after I'm done with this mid color, I'm just going to take whatever paint I have left and mix up some more Mod Podge with some white. Um, it's not really going to matter if it has kind of a lavender hue to it because we're going to do this whole top section in a beautiful diamondy color silver from Grateful Glitters called Glass Slipper. I'm just doing like I would in between the squares and sneaking up on that line making sure that I don't go too far over and just paint this whole section and then spread glitter just like you would for anything else. Thank you. 
My camera wasn't recording when I did the first round of glitter on this bottom, but I wanted to make sure that I just added this in. Same thing as all the other lines, just take your time and let your brush barely touch down on the cup and then just kind of pull away. And it creates a pretty straight line with this flat edged paintbrush. So go around and get all the seams however far up you want them. And I did this bottom the same exact darkest color that I did for the buffalo check so it all just kind of tied together. And we're gonna set it off to the side, let it dry for two hours, come back in, brush it vigorously, get off all the loose glitter, and then go around and do another coat on this top silver spot. And then if you have any other spots that need a little sprucing up or filling in, feel free to do that too. And the reason I'm doing this solid silver at the top is that when I did the first cup, I, when I went to sand the rim underneath the silver and the silver chunky waterfall up on top, it actually revealed the buffalo check purple and white underneath and it just looked really goofy. So on the second go around, I wanted to make sure there was full coverage even when I sanded. So then we're going to let that dry for two hours and come back in again, brush it. And I'm going to mix up some Mod Podge and Straight White. I'm doing this in a brand new clean cup so I don't get any color contamination. I don't want this white glitter to absorb any color at all. <laughs> I want it to be white. So this one probably took me the longest because you're, you've got straight solid lines on each side. Using that chisel tip up in the corners helps really, really well to get up there without kind of blobbing over into the next color if that makes sense and same as all the other ones put your brush down anchor your pinky so you've got some stability there and set your brush down and pull out away from the line just making sure that you know exactly where your brush is After this second coat, we're going to let this dry completely. I let mine dry overnight. I brushed it off really vigorously and then I sealed it so, so well with Rust-Oleum Clear Spray Paint and let that dry completely. And then I went in with this first coat of Artistry Epoxy. And this is not my flood coat. I'm actually going to try to do this super, super thin so that I'm using this kind of like the epoxy method to anchor the waterfall, the chunky glitter and everything. So I want this to be as smooth as or thin as possible. So I'm just using using as little as I absolutely can, but knowing that I'm still over this glitter. That's why we sealed it really well so the purple didn't move into the white or anything like that while we were trying to stretch this epoxy as thin as we could. So I'm going to let this kind of self-level for just a couple of seconds. And then just like you would for an ombre or something like that, you're going to take this chunky glitter and I am going to try to get as heavy of a coat as I can to get full coverage up at this rim and that first top line where the glass slipper glitter is underneath of it. And so I've got my cup angled down just a little bit and you want to kind of 
be careful here because chunky glitter tends to have a mind of its own and likes to take flight sometimes. So I'm actually fairly close to the cup so it's not like bouncing off and going everywhere. But I just keep going until I get as much coverage as I think I'm going to want. And then I tap that off and go over it with another little bit of glass slipper just to fill in any gaps that I might have missed at this top rim and down into the top like third of the cup a little bit. And then I'm going to take my scissors and tap off any excess and then grab a piece of this wax paper that I've been catching my glitter on. I'm going to anchor it onto my hand and then I'm going to go around and press down any of that chunky glitter that might be poking up and I'm going to work my way down. I don't want to go too far down into the cup because I don't want to transfer much more of that glitter that might stick to the wax paper down below where I wanted that waterfall to stop. So then I just take my gloved hand and I'm going to go around and kind of wipe that rim and then kind of push that glitter up just a hair revealing just that tiniest bit where we're going to be sanding so that I don't sand down into that chunky glitter as much. And then because I'm using regular artistry epoxy, not the facet, I'm going to let this cure for four hours and then I'm going to do a flood coat consisting of the two heavier coats. Let me know if you guys are interested in a video on that and I will make that happen. But then I just take this down in my basement and use a palm sander and I'm going to sand just a small rim around that top to expose the stainless steel so we can get a good solid seal on the side, not just on the top. And then we're moving on to the water slide component. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here because you guys have seen me do water slides quite a few times but just like usual soak it and I mirror my image so I can just slide it off the back push out any bubbles with the silicone brush and then allow this to dry completely and then because this bleach spot sprayed a little lower than I wanted it to go covering up a little bit too much of the cup I go ahead and take some 91% alcohol on a little just piece of paper towel and I don't want too much on it and I'm just going to kind of scrub that back a little bit. I'm using just kind of a corner of this so instead of like just swiping it in one swipe I'm kind of rubbing it in little lines hoping to not make it look like I just swiped across but that it kind of blends together a little better. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm going to seal with polycrylic like always from all directions and let that dry for an hour. And then because I wanted to give this cup just a little bit of extra shimmer even over this bleach spot and the decal, I'm going to add just a minute amount of Over the Rainbow, which is a top coat additive. And like you can see, it's just a tiniest bit. Little dabble do you, you guys. You can always add more on the second coat if you want to, but I just stir this into my epoxy and then apply. I did go in with one final coat after that and cleaned up the rim and then she was good to go. The 360 video and pictures will be coming up in a second, but if you guys find value out of this video, could you please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help the channel and hit the bell notification because I have got a banger of a video coming out next week, you guys. I'm so excited. It's not like anything I've seen yet on, in the Tumblr world, so definitely stick around and until next time I hope you guys have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns in the comment section and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!